Now, till now we were discussing elements using ID name and class name. Now let's go with XPath. When do we get? When should and when we'll go with an XPath concept? So if you see here, I am trying to identify an element called agents login. I have identified, I have placed a pointer on the agents login available on the header. So once I place it, a tag has been identified. This tag is representing the agents login hyperlink. If you see here, I have a class that is class name defined and another attribute called href. So if you see here, list of tags are also defined for other elements on the header like uh, about us, blogs, class name, uh, loans, uh, loans in India, media coverage. When I place the cursor, uh, you can see the blue highlighted region on the header on different elements. If you see this class value is not unique. Text for, text for, text for, text for is defined. But if I want to identify only agents login, I want to perform an action of clicking on agents login. I cannot use this text for value defined for the class name. So what is the other option? Do I have an ID? I don't have an ID. I don't have name and I have a class name but the class name is not unique. So how do I identify this element? The next approach is XPath. So how do we identify XPath? So for identifying the XPath, we don't have an add-on for Internet Explorer. We don't have any such add-on which can help us to identify the elements on Internet Explorer using uh, for XPath. The only choice for we have is either Chrome or Firefox. We need to identify the element on Chrome and use that on Internet Explorer. You may get out. There are many applications that may not support Firefox and Chrome. How do I do that? It may not support, but the page rendering will happen. The page rendering of that particular web page, maybe the scattered web page, but the page rendering will happen. So to identify the web page, the page rendering should not be have we, sh we should not expect that page should look very neatly and all those things. For to identify that element, just we need to have the page coming up on the given uh, on Firefox or Chrome. Then we can identify the element. So once you get the expertise, you don't even look for. Uh, Firebug, uh, the add-ons directly you'll write on your own. But at the starting stage, you need an add-on to identify. I will show you how, without using any add-on, how can we identify an element uh, also. So here we are seeing a tag called agents login, which we are unable to identify using an ID or name or class name. So how do I identify this? There are two add-ons. So first of all, let's go with one add-on, which is an integrated add-on in Firebug. That is Firepath. This doesn't come as part of Firebug. We need to install it. This will be added to Firebug. So once you install Firebug, then only you can add this Firepath. Always remember, you cannot directly install Firepath. Firepath has to be installed once the Firebug is installed in your computer. So I have installed Firepath in my computer. If you want to see, I'll just show you. So the, there is no versioning concept for Firepath. Once you install, once you add this Firepath, it will automatically get added to Firebug. So just click on Firepath add-on in Google. You will get the Firebug uh, Firepath add to 
fire uh, add to chrome or add to firefox then you will you can go ahead with that okay so i'm just as it is installed in my computer i'm just going ahead with identifying the element so in the html always remember uh, people will be getting confused they directly go ahead to identify with, with firefox always have the pointer on html menu don't directly go with firefox once try to identify whether this element can be identified with id name or class name if it is not possible then go with fire path click on fire path use the pointer use the pointer and click on that particular element once you click on that particular element uh, automatically x path will be generated this is the x path generated for that particular agent's login how can we say that this is identifying the element or not? If you see here, a blue color dotted region is getting highlighted on that particular element. So how can we say that uh, as we are clicking on it, it may be getting highlighted. What I will do is I will do control X. I will refresh the page that particular blue color highlighted region is lost now once again whatever the fire path has identified i'll place it over there if you see that blue color highlighted region has come over here and in the bottom if you see one no matching node one matching node is nothing but that particular tag is getting highlighted on the firebug that means this particular tag is uh, helping uh, is highlighting the agent's login that means this agent's login can be identified with this x path but this is not the right approach of identifying any element because i'll explain you why and because okay so we have another add on to identify the x path on firefox i'll explain you chrome after in further classes once i complete total uh, fire uh, firefox then only i'll go with chrome okay so x path add on once you click on x path add on you will get X path checker. So click on X path checker and it will ask for download now. Once you click on download, on the screen you will see something like view X path. I show you because it is auto. It was already installed in my computer. I will show you here. Whatever the element. That you want to identify you can just place a cursor on it and identify we'll see some issues but sometimes see the x path for full name text box is something like this this is the uh, x path for this but this may be we cannot use in this way to identify the full name text box the reason I'll tell you when I explain you the clear implementation of how X paths are identified. See, I have used X path checker, uh, right click on that particular text box and view X path when I have done this X path got identified. I place the same thing on fire path and clicked on find. If you see the blue color dotted region is highlighting this and if you see on the bottom one matching node always remember whenever you are seeing it should be one matching node not more than one matching node if it is more than one matching node that means our x path is not correct it is identifying two elements 
if you if you see it has identified id in uh, method braces as name but when i use file path it gives you a different text path it shows dots double slash star at the rate id equal to name see it is showing a different text path again but both the text paths are identifying the same web element so you have any questions on fire path or x path add on this is not completed we will have another one or two sessions on x path because x path concept is very 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 important in selenium any element which you cannot identify using id name or class name should be identified with x path and i will explain you how to identify x path in a very very clear way so this is a basic way this is a basic i have explained so if you have any doubts come up with your questions go ahead swapna with your question ah uh, so hope everyone understands html tags right okay uh uh rajni was asking how can i practice on your sessions so as uh, rajni always have whatever i'm teaching you i want you to practice the same on your computers as well because yesterday i was teaching yesterday i was showing you to identify the elements on uh, internet explorer the same at the same time i was asking you to practice right the same thing will go ahead in the uh, in the further classes as well because uh, yesterday it was yesterday i made you to practice that the same thing we are using on firebug so i did not ask you guys to go ahead to do that but yeah we have another 10 to 15 minutes you can go ahead with that now also thanks for remembering rajni so to everyone are you ready to uh if i give you a task now on id name and class name are you ready to do that yeah rajini not a problem uh you can have the firebug and all those things on uh this uh, uh, firefox all as well not a problem sirendra just for the today you can uh, just be idle from tomorrow you can also participate in the practice session okay so every uh, uh, in between once i teach a topic i we will have a practice session as well okay so everyone go ahead and install firebug in your computers and open this particular website in your computer it's everyone and i want everyone to give me the answer this is how i will understand you are uh, going ahead with uh my teaching put firebug in your computer and identify annual income on that particular website go ahead with any approach id name or class name but i want it should be unique don't go with xpath now because xpath is a separate session and to everyone if you have any suggestions you can even suggest as swapna was telling the there is a sound deviation and all those things xpath is nothing but uh, uh sapna in selenium terms or in automation terms whenever we cannot identify any element with id or name or class name we have the other approach called xpath it is nothing but to identify an element in the same way what we do with id or name or class name but a uh, 
but making use of attributes defined by the developers it doesn't it is for automation perspective this is the only thing that what we require we don't have any specific thing to know what xpath is all about in uh, selenium because uh, if you see a gwt application the google uh, if you go with google application if you just see here this gwt applications are little typical applications uh, gwt google web toolkit applications google.com is one such if you see i'll show you one thing over here this api the gwt api auto generates class names and all those things see if you see here id you got an id called gs underscore ht info just after three or four days see the same text box you will not see the same id gs underscore ht if zero because what happens with gwt applications is these are dynamically generated ids class names what happens is whenever the google team shut down the servers of this google application and restarts the applications of google these ids and class names everything change automatically after a week or 10 days whenever you see you will not see the same things that are defined over here the id or class name and all those things so in these cases xpaths are very much helpful for us because when we do automation we should not change the scripts every time uh, according to the changes we should write 